Welcome to the coolest stuff on the planet. Oh, hello everybody. My name is Matthew, and welcome to the coolest stuff on the planet. Uh, yes, like I said, Matthew, me. Ah, who are you? <laughs> I'm Rachel, um, and I'm laughing and trying trying to uh, maintain my composure. I'm really sorry. I'm not making fun of anybody. <laughs> no, I'm no. just I'm silly, and I I not funny. No, I'm no, just silly. No, that was fabulous. And we should let everyone know. Obviously, you know from reading the iTunes title that today's topic takes place in Scotland. So, full disclosure. Matt and I are big fans of, well, accents in general, but Scottish in particular. So here and there, we may not be able to resist the urge to break out the Scottish accent. So bear with us, everyone. All silliness aside, today's topic takes us to the heather-clad hills of Scotland for some traditional Scottish games or Highland games. What is heather-clad? That means they have heather all over them. Heather? Like a lady named no, Heather? No, no, no. Oh, you don't know what Heather is? I have no idea what Heather is. Oh, yeah. Heather is um, uh, a plant, a purplish plant that is native to Scotland. And um, it's all over the place. And it's it's kind of like the uh, one of the iconic images of Scotland, Heather. So the hills all around this town of Braemar have a lot of Heather. Nice. So Thank that's, you, Rachel. that's what I mean by Heather clad. Nice. And that is how stuff works, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> So Scotland is famous for its Highland games, and you're going to find them all over the country of Scotland. And also, they've picked up their bags and they've moved on a bit, so you can find them even near us, Rachel. Do you know, there's a game called the Grandfather Mountain Games, and they take place in North Carolina. Mm -hmm. And there's also the Stone Mountain Highland Games. They they take place right here at Stone Mountain Park in East Atlanta. Which is really close to us. Yeah, and I've been to that one when I was a bit younger. Yeah, that was a lot of fun. Well, I I read that it's in October, so when it happens, Mm -hmm. I'm going. Done. Yeah. So this particular gathering, the Braemar Gathering, is one of the most famous in the world, and we'll tell you why in a minute. Um, and although uh, the modern Highland Games have been around since about 1832, it's said that there have been um, ancient gatherings for hundreds of years. So yes, they're definitely old, but why are they famous, Rachel? Well, that's because they have a famous fan base. British royalty has been attending these games since Queen Victoria took interest in the Braemar Gathering in like the 1848 games. Right, so the Queen is effectively the chieftain and the patron of the games. Okay. She kind of um, sort of presides over the event. I'm, I'm pretty sure she gives awards to the victors and she watches the proceedings. And there's nice. even a royal box, um, which is decorated in heather. Mm-hmm. And so the royal family and the queen and, and whoever, whichever guests they have mm-hmm. um, sit in the box to watch the games. And the traditional events of the gathering are like track and field kind of events that you would see in the Olympics. Uh, events like hill races, relays, sprints. And uh, there, but there's even like a tug of war, which is really cool. <laughs> this That's is really my favorite. Fun. Well, one of my favorites. Oh yeah. Well, it, the military or military forces will will join in and participate in this thing too, right? So you'll have different forces fighting against each other, mm-hmm. tugging Just, against uh, each other, like the navy versus the air force. So in addition to these um, these events, there are also the quintessential Highland events, which are called the heavy events. Mm-hmm. Um, probably the most famous of these is the caber tossing. These big men in these plaid kilts take this pole, this thick pole, this tree trunk basically, and hurl it in the air. And Matt's going to tell us exactly how that works. So the goal is to make the straightest toss, not the longest like some of the other competitions. Which I didn't know. I was surprised. Yeah, it's really interesting. And I, even after watching it, I don't think I knew what the rules were when I was watching people throw logs before these giant trees. Yeah, we didn't really grow up with the log tossing. So, But uh, historically, the reason the reason why it's important to be straight rather than far is because um, these these felled trees or these trunks, the cabers, they used to they used to use them to cross rivers. So you would throw it straight across and you would cross over the river just walking across a log. Mm -hmm. And if it was at an angle that wasn't exactly perpendicular to the way the river is running, then there's a high percentage chance that that log is going to turn a little bit and then fall into the river and you're not going to be able to cross or you're going to fall into the river. Mm -hmm. And that was not a good thing. Okay, so that's part of like the mythology sort of of the caber toss. Yeah, that's why this game exists. And so today the rule, I guess, is that you kind of flip it end over end. It's called yeah. um, turning the caber. Yeah. So yeah, that's a very cool cool event that I'd really like to see in person. It'd be mm-hmm. awesome. And we will very soon. Yeah. October. 
Okay, so another heavy event is called throwing the hammer. And hammer throwing is, is actually an Olympic sport, but um, the Highland hammer toss is a little bit different. It's because it's not an all metal hammer. It's kind of, it, it, it has like a shaft that might be made of wood or piping, and then it has a heavy ball on the end. And so the competitor tosses it around their head and then hurls it as far as they can behind their head. Putting the stone is another competition. It's kind of like shot put, except for they use a real stone instead of a, a metal ball, a weighted ball. And um, this one, this one's a little different though, because unlike shot put, the the thrower must remain stationary when they're throwing. You can't run up and spin around and throw the stone. You have to just stand there and throw the stone. And uh, by the way, the stone's weight it can range from 20 to 26 pounds. Um, and also that's 9 to 11.8 kilograms. There's another one, there's an open uh, stone throw that, mm -hmm. that that's a lighter stone. But um, this is really cool, Rachel. The, the, his the history behind this is because each chieftain would have a stone, a stone of strength is what they the call it. The chief of the clans? Yeah, and it would sit right outside the entrance to his castle or uh, just his, his dwelling, wherever his base was. Mm -hmm. And before entry is granted, you have to come up, pick up that stone and throw it. Mm -hmm. to prove that you were able to throw the stone and, and you could defend the castle in case it got attacked while you're inside the castle, mm -hmm. which is pretty cool. Because um, if you were defending, you'd be standing up on the parapets or up, up top and you'd just be hurling stones <laughs> at the people who are attacking, Cool, which is kind of awesome. Well, that, and that's interesting because um, the history of the Highland Games is, um, well, at least on the internet, is, is a little bit unclear. So these events were ways for the chiefs to figure out which of their soldiers would be uh were good warriors had athletic prowess and so that makes sense that they would that all these heavy things would be you know utilized to show strength mm -hmm. and agility oh yeah so in addition to these very cool heavy events you also have um dancing and piping and um piping is bagpipe players if you didn't know and mm -hmm. i didn't know so pipers are bagpipe players you have single piping contests, but you also have these pipe bands that play all together. Yeah. And that's a big highlight of the games, the massed pipe bands when they all play together and mm -hmm. they march. And you also, you'll find solo players and there are some competitions for that too. Um, and smaller competitions for drummers and pipers just alone. I thought you would like that, Matt, that there are drummers. Yes, I do like Because you're drummers. a drummer. Oh, I am. And by the way, there's dancing. Hello. Check this out. So traditionally, Highland dancing was performed by men and only men. Mm -hmm. It was the, the manly Highland dance. Uh, but now today, it's it's mostly women who compete in those. And you'll you if you you can search for it online, you can find tons of YouTube videos of Highland dancing. I think my sister might have done this a little bit of this Highland dancing really? when she was growing up, just for fun. So the Braemar gathering sounds like a lot of fun. Um, I know Matt and I would definitely like to go. And, um, but you should check it out if you're ever in Scotland in September. Yes. Oh, we forgot to mention that it takes place the first Saturday in September every year. Yes, if you happen to be in Scotland. Yes. Ladies and gentlemen, that means it's time for Human Mail. Mail, mail. I wish we had a cool sound for that. Maybe, I do too. Maybe someone could help us out with that. This message comes from Seagal. It's S-I-G-A-L. I do apologize if I'm pronouncing that incorrectly. And um, says, Hi, I just listened to your Masada podcast, and it's very exciting to see a podcast about my home country. Smiley face. I would like to suggest a topic, by the way. The Dead Sea and its area, like the Kumaran Caves where the Dead Sea Scrolls were found. Also, a tip for tourists who want to see Masada, the Judean Desert is really hot during the day, especially during the summer, so it's best to start ascending early in the morning, around 7 a.m. is good, and start descending by noon. It's also a good recommendation for any activity in the Judean Desert, not just for Masada, so it's best to stay overnight in the area, so you can get up early and go there. Good tip. Also says, and the sunrise is indeed very beautiful, a very nice way to start your day. Regards, Sigal. Oh, well, thanks, Sigal. Or mm -hmm. Sigal. Yeah, sorry. sorry for mispronouncing your name. Yes. But we appreciate the email, and that's cool. And it's funny because we were um, we were thinking of um, including a little bit about the Dead Sea in the Masada episode, but we just ran out of time. Mm -hmm. So we'll definitely do an episode on that in the future. That's a really good topic. So thanks for that. Absolutely. And I guess that's it for us. See you next time, everybody. For more cool stuff. For more on this and thousands of other topics, visit HowStuffWorks.com and let us know what you think. 
email travel podcast at howstuffworks.com. Don't forget to check out our other podcasts free on iTunes.